dem Auto gewidmet. Ich kann zum Schluss sagen, ich baute Autos. The story of Audi. In the world of automobiles, only a few names strike the same sense of prestige and innovation as Audi. From its humble origins to its current status as a global automotive icon, the history of Audi is a story of perseverance, creativity, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Join me on a journey through time as we unravel the remarkable story of Audi, a brand that has redefined the road of progress. But first, we must turn back the clock to where and how it all began. Chapter 1. The Beginning August Horch an automobile engineer and entrepreneur played a significant role in the early development of the Audi brand. Born on October 12, 1868, in Winningen, a small town in western Germany. From a young age, Horch had shown a keen interest in mechanics and engineering. After completing his basic education, he enrolled at the Royal Technical Academy in Medvida, where he studied engineering and automotive technology. At the end of his education, Horch began his career in the emerging field of automotive engineering. He worked for several automobile manufacturers in Germany, including Benz and C, where he gained valuable experience in designing and building automobiles, which laid some of the foundation for the Audi that we know today. Chapter 2. New Companies On November 14, 1899, in the small yet beautiful town of Zwickau, Germany, August Horch founded his own automobile company, a Horch and C in Cologne, Germany. Horch quickly gained a reputation for producing high quality automobiles, which were ahead of their time in terms of design and engineering. In 1909, Horch faced an internal conflict that although threatened the existence of his company, ended up becoming a building stone for Audi's foundation. Despite his early success in the automobile industry and his company, Horch faced financial difficulties and disagreements with his business partners. In 1909, he left A. Horch and C., and because he was so determined to continue his automobile endeavors, he established a new company called Horch Automobile Werk GmbH in Zwickau, Saxony. This move led to a legal dispute with his former company over the use of the Horch name, as his former partners argued that he could not use his surname for a competing automobile brand. Chapter 3. Audi The birth of the Audi name was not without its trials. Being a visionary engineer, with high wits not limited to be automobiles or engineering alone, August Horch and his colleagues held a meeting to brainstorm a new name for the company to resolve the legal dispute with his former partners and continue his automobile manufacturing venture. During this meeting, Horch's business associate, Franz Fickenschar, suggested the Latin translation of Horch, which is Audi, meaning listen. August Horch liked the name, and in 1910, the company was officially renamed Audi Automobile Werkt GmbH Swickau. But then, Audi's early years were tested tremendously. The successful luxury car brand we see and admire today wasn't without its trials. Audi faced numerous challenges during its early years, including the financial turmoil of World War I and the post war economic hardships. However, resilience and innovation remained at the core of the company's philosophy. Audi's focus on producing reliable and affordable cars helped it weather these stormy seas. Under the Audi name, the company continued to thrive, producing innovative and high-quality automobiles. August Horch's commitment to excellence and innovation led to several notable achievements, including the introduction of left-handed drive cars and the development of advanced engine technology. Chapter 4. Four became one. On the 29th of June in 1932, four significant automobile companies in Germany came together to form a single company. Audi, DKW, Horch, and Wanderer merged to form Auto Union AG, with each brand maintaining its identity under the Auto Union umbrella. Due to the global recession in 1929, the demand for automobiles plummeted. The four companies, 
who had been successful up until that point, ran into financial difficulties. The solution was the union of the four brands, which was initiated by the State Bank of Saxony. This merger eventually led to the iconic four interlocking rings logo. Each ring symbolizes one of the four founding companies, but they are also interconnected, representing the unity and collaboration between them. Chapter 5. The Journey In 1910, the Audi Type A was the first car to bear the Audi name, a modest vehicle with a 22-horsepower engine. It marked the beginning of Audi's journey in the automotive industry. Between 1933 and 1938, Audi introduced the front UW220 and the UW225, which were notable for being one of the first cars to have a front-wheel drive layout, a groundbreaking innovation at the time. It set the stage for Audi's future developments in drivetrain technology. Audi, along with the other auto union member companies, produced a series of powerful and iconic Grand Prix racing cars during the 1930s. These Silver Arrows were known for their speed and success on the racetrack. The cars, including Type A, B, and C, utilized supercharged V16 engines from 1934 to 1937. Meanwhile, the Type D manufactured between 1938 and 1939 in compliance with the new 1938 regulations, featured a supercharged 3.0-liter V12 engine producing nearly 550 horsepower. All these designs posed handling challenges due to their extreme power-to-weight ratios, with the ability to induce wheel spin at speeds exceeding 160 kilometers per hour. Additionally, they exhibited marked oversteer owing to uneven weight distribution, with all models being rear heavy. Notably, the Type D offered a more manageable driving experience thanks to its smaller, lighter engine position closer to the vehicle's center of mass. Chapter 6 Involvement in War After the World War began in 1939, Many German automobile companies were contacted to join efforts in producing automobile hardware needed for the war. The auto union, which Audi was now a part of, wasn't left out of this deal. During the war, Audi's production facilities were heavily involved in manufacturing military vehicles for the German armed forces. These vehicles included trucks, motorcycles, and even some armored tanks. One notable example was the Horch 108 a military off-road vehicle produced by Horch, one of the auto union brands. These vehicles were used for transportation, reconnaissance, and several other military purposes. Auto union's factories, including those associated with Audi, were also involved in the production of aircraft engines for the German Luftwaffe. The auto union's engineers and technicians worked on developing and manufacturing aircraft engines used in various German fighter planes and bombers. It's important to note that, like many other German companies during the war, Auto Union, including Audi, used forced labor from concentration camps and prisoners of war. This is a dark aspect of the company's wartime history, as the use of forced labor resulted in significant suffering and loss of life for those subjected to it. Chapter 7 Auto Union Disbanded the post-war era was a challenging period for Audi as it grappled with the post-war devastation and limited resources. After World War II, Germany was occupied by Allied forces, and the Auto Union Consortium faced significant challenges in the post-war era. The company's assets were seized, and the brands under Auto Union were temporarily discontinued. The Auto Union Consortium was disbanded, and the various brands went their separate ways. It was only later, in 1949, that the Auto Union Consortium was re-established in Ingolstadt, Bavaria, with the support of the West German government. The new Auto Union initially consisted of just two brands, Audi and DKW, focusing on producing small, economical vehicles, leading to the revival of the Audi brand. Audi's revival was closely tied to the DKW brand, which had a reputation for producing small, two-stroke engine vehicles, 
Audi engineers, inspired by DKW's technology, developed the Audi F103 in the early 1960s. This compact sedan featured a four-stroke engine and front-wheel drive, marking a departure from DKW's two-stroke designs. During this period, the iconic four interlocking rings logo was reintroduced, symbolizing the four brands of the original Auto Union Consortium. This logo continues to represent Audi to this day. Audi's commitment to innovation was evident in its development of advanced technologies. In 1965, Audi introduced the world to the first production car with front-wheel drive, a five-cylinder engine, and advanced safety features, setting new standards in the automotive industry. Chapter 8. Luxury Cars In the 1990s, Audi rose into the elite league of luxury cars with the introduction of the Audi A8. This flagship sedan was a class apart, showcasing Audi's opulence, innovation, and uncompromising commitment to excellence. Audi A8's entry into the luxury segment represented a bold step forward. The Audi A8, with its aluminum space frame, set new standards for lightweight construction and elegance. The brand was no longer just about performance. It was about luxury and sophistication, designed to compete with the finest Germany's luxury car, Triumphant, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Audi's fellow countryman, Porsche. As the automotive industry underwent a tremulous shift towards sustainability and electric mobility, Audi once again found itself at the forefront. The Audi e-tron series represents the brand's commitment to leading the charge in electric vehicle technology. An e-tron model's electric SUVs and sedans combine the brand's signature performance with zero-emission electric powertrains, shaping the future of sustainable transportation. If there's one thing Audi and Porsche have in common is the entrepreneurial spirit and passion their founders had for automotive engineering. However, the disturbing story of Porsche had a poor boy struggle to build a multinational automobile, and his bloodline later split the company's shares and handed over power. If you want to know more about him, just click here, and I'll see you over there. Until then, don't forget to like and follow. I'll catch you in the next one.